these physical chemical characteristics of uh, components or diets for poultry or polymonogastric animals help us to understand better um, viscosity, passage rate, or absorption of certain nutrients. Why? Why that's important? Because fiber as an entity uh, of the diet may also interact with the nutrients uh, um, uh, along the uh, small intestine, along using the digester, with the content of the digester. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast brought to you by Wisenetics, where we bring some of the latest in the poultry industry and uh, research, uh, poultry nutrition industry and research trends in approximately uh, 10 minutes. My name is Sam Rochel. I'm an associate professor uh, at Auburn University here in Alabama and joined today by another uh, university faculty member uh, from a ways away in Germany, uh, Professor Martin Gierhus uh, from uh, uh, University of Boku. I'll let him explain the, the full name of the university, uh, but we're going to have a, a good conversation about fiber and poultry, uh, which I think is going to be very uh, interesting as that's uh, often a, a misunderstood uh, component of the diet, and there's still a lot of questions. So I uh, look forward to the conversation today, and uh, great to meet you, Professor Marty. Nice to meet you too, and to have this day and exchange some ideas about fiber in poultry nutrition. Yeah. Sure. Before we get to the, the technical nutrition part, can you give the audience just a little bit of background about uh, your current position and kind of your history leading up to that uh, briefly? Okay. I'm uh, here a, a full professor of animal nutrition since 10 years now in Vienna, in Austria, in the Boku University. Mm -hmm. And I'm the head of the Institute of Animal Nutrition, Nutrition Physiology and Livestock Program. Very good. Well, thank you. Um, so you've got a background uh, kind of across different species, I think, maybe, um, but in poultry, um, you know, and, and have a, a lot of background on fiber. So I think it, it's good because compared with other, you know, components of the diet, uh, fiber is a little tougher to, to define chemically. So uh, for the context of today, can you just talk, tell everybody what fiber is and, and how we get it a, a fiber value for a feed ingredient? So we had fiber as an interesting uh, definition of a component in diet because either we want or don't want it, his fiber is there in diet. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can try. We, we try to control the amount, and nowadays we have new sources. Maybe a lot of byproducts we want to use, and they mostly contain fiber. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what is fiber, and how we can define fiber? And the definition nowadays of fiber is. Fiber are all carbohydrates that cannot be digested by uh, the enzymes of the animal. So they have to be an interaction with microorganisms to degrade fiber. So there are a lot of carbohydrates types that can be that can belong to this component or this huge amount of uh, uh, components uh, belonging to carbohydrates or fiber. And we try now to uh, in the laboratory to make an analysis of fiber that is beyond those uh, measurements of crude fiber. Mm -hmm. We are not looking for the monogastrics for uh, NDF or ADF, but we are looking to a measurement of total diet type fiber. Mm -hmm. So total diet type fiber, you can look and make a separation even for soluble and insoluble fiber. Mm -hmm. And this will help us to characterize most of the uh, fiber sources. Now, even cereals contain low amount of fiber or the uh, pools or other sources that contain a lot of fiber. So you make characterization. Mm -hmm. so the characterization is a definition by total dietary fiber, a lot of procedures to do. Beyond that uh, characterization, we are looking also for the physical chemical properties of fiber. Mm -hmm. So what does what does it mean? Propel uh, these uh, physical chemical properties. These are, for instance, the buffering capacity, water holding capacity, or swelling properties. And these physical chemical characteristics of uh, components or diets for poultry or other monogastric animals help us to understand better um, viscosity, passage rate, or absorption of certain nutrients. Why? Why that's important? Because fiber as an entity uh, of the diet may also interact with the nutrients 
um, uh, along the uh, small intestine, along using the digester, with the content of the digester. So, um, for instance, the buffering capacity is retaining or the or avoiding the, the, the reduction or the decrease of pH mm-hmm. where it would be necessary. And sometimes it's not um, just choosing the wrong fiber source may also make that difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, or uh, it will extend the uh, the emptying process of the stomach just to, if you choose the wrong fiber or particle size of the fiber. Yeah. So that's why the fiber characterization, not the amount per se, but the type of fiber, mm-hmm. the source of fiber, is becoming more and more important in food to nutrition also. You know, I mean, I think this is interesting. Obviously, from the European perspective, you're dealing with a, a higher diversity of higher fiber ingredients than we are in the U.S. with corn and soy. So I think we have a, a lot to learn uh, from you on that. I, I mean, do you think uh, at this stage, um, obviously, we have to talk, as you mentioned, about the type of fiber uh, probably is more as equally or more important than just the amount. But I mean, can you talk a little bit about how poultry handle fiber, how it impacts, you know, nutrient digestion and ultimately performance, whether that's growth performance, uh, how we can utilize fiber in, you know, laying can or breeder diets when we're trying to maybe uh, restrict calorie intake a bit? Well, yes, uh, I think from poultry compared to other monograss that have a higher fermentation rate in these uh, large intestines, poultry is not a good example for that. So we will keep the amount of fiber probably low in mm-hmm. in poultry for especially broiler nutrition, but for uh, those that want to have a dilution of energy, fiber is quite important again. Mm-hmm. But the focus is not the amount again. The, the focus is type of fiber. You know? What is the source of fiber and how these fiber types uh, differently behave in the uh, intestinal tract, in the uh, gizzard or proventriculus, and so and that's. Uh, also influencing the emptying rate, but also mm-hmm. the transit rate or the passage rate uh, through the intestines. Yeah, that's interaction. For instance, we see that some um, uh, uh, fiber types have a high um, water holding capacity. This means it is a high correlation with the vis- increasing viscosity. Yeah, and the viscosity means also a lower passage rate, mm-hmm. poor absorption of nutrients. Other types of fiber we want to try to understand better is the cation exchange capacity of fiber. This means they may retain some positive loaded uh, nutrients, amino acids, minerals, and make it more difficult to be absorbed. So, or later in the small intestines. And you know, uh, for fast growing poultry, sometimes higher digestibility is quite important. Mm-hmm. And that's important also to, to make the right choice of fiber types. You know? Sure. By the way, also um, we understand fiber as a kind of bioactive compound, yeah, you know, in the nutrients uh, or in the digestion or in the diets of poultry. Why bioactive compounds? Because there is no real nutrient you are giving. That's not an energy source or a nutrient source, but is a way how you may uh, support interactions mm-hmm. in, uh, the digester in the small intestine, yeah. You know? Uh, avoiding or speeding up the absorption or reducing the speed of absorption of the absorption rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What we don't know at the moment is um, how um, the fermentation of uh, fiber types may influence poultry nutrition. Uh, because uh, in pigs, you know, that's a large, uh, uh, large intestine is proportionally higher. They may gain some energy although low, not comparable to ruminant nutrition that have mm-hmm. a high fermentation rate, of course, in the rumen, but peaks are even higher, but uh, then also higher than uh, poultry. Yeah? Um, we try or we see in our results, for instance, uh, for peaks, that if you include a certain proportion of fiber, this fiber will be fermented, you will produce volatile fatty acids, of course, as I mm-hmm. interact with the microbiota existing there, but also the positive thing is that you see proportional to the increase in proportion of volatility as a reduction of ammonia production, ammonia reduced mm. that one. So if you have a nitrogen proportion that is uh, poorly digested and this arrives the small, the large intestine that will be used by the microbiota existing there. And also our results show that uh, it can 
reduce also ammonia production because microorganisms are using these nitrogen sources for their own microbial growth there. Mm, yeah. From the environment point of view, it may be interesting, yeah, to see this. You know? And um, our uh, work are going also to understand better which kind of uh, microorganism should be there to support better this utilization of of nitrogen, but also after excretion of feces and urine of so all together at the, the birds, of course. Uh, in the litter to avoid ammonia production there. Mm, yeah, right. Okay, there's a whole complete uh, analysis of fiber interaction with nutrient and mm -hmm. well nutrient losses, and we try, of course, uh, in the point from the point of view of climate change emissions to uh, give a support using fiber in interaction with microorganisms in the small and large intestines. With science-led solutions that are sustainable, proven, and effective, BASF helps you tackle the challenges of poultry nutrition. We offer high-quality feed ingredients that enable a more sustainable production and help you achieve your animal performance targets. We call it the science of sustainable feed that succeeds. No, that's that's very interesting and exciting. I mean, those are problems, you know, that, that we tackle in many different ways. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of emphasis uh, in the U.S., uh, but particularly globally on uh, reduced crude protein diets for, for to, to address the same issue. But, um, you know, that's uh, just looking at protein and amino acid balance alone is not the, the only uh, we can't look at that in a silo because we have these interactions. So I think that's really neat looking at you know, we, we've, I think, long understood the potential to manipulate fiber to improve gastrointestinal health and, and uh, you know, the microbiota, but actually now looking at the, the practical implications of that, of, of overall nutrient digestibility, particularly around nitrogen and, and ammonia production, I think that's, that's very exciting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us today and, and really appreciate your insight and look forward to, to keeping up with this now and, and seeing uh, where this this uh, research from your lab and university goes. So thank you again. Thank you very much for your opportunity. Great. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this, uh, as always, please uh, like and subscribe. And, and we'd appreciate a review and uh, look forward to the next one. And uh, thanks again, Sam Rochel here. And uh, look forward to, to the next episode. Thank you.